Hey everyone, and welcome to Groove Builders, the show where we create together. I'm your host, Disorderly Cone, and in this episode, we're going to be building a tool that will help everyone in the 3D metal model community. I know that's a big claim, but when you think about it, all the tools that we use to build these models are from different hobbies, and they are very useful, but there's nothing really specifically made for us. I mean, there are the guys over at 3D Metal Tools that make some really cool acrylic stuff. There's also Animate Orange who makes some really neat 3D printed tools that work very well. And there also is some manufacturer tools like pliers and they make a version of that metal pencil that we talked about before. I guess all of these are useful, but there's definitely some other tools that we can look to bring into our community that can be very helpful. And one of the places we can look at is the grandfather of 3D Metal Models, the Photo Etch community. Now, for those who aren't too familiar with this community, what they do is they take brass sheets and also use chemical and electrical compounds to create these really awesome thin parts. These thin detail pieces are then applied to plastic and resin models to really make those details pop. These details are extremely thin. And just taking one look at these pieces, you can see what I mean when I say this is the grandfather of 3D metal models. Now, in this industry, they use a tool called a photo etch break, and this is used to help bend really fine pieces. And I think we can adapt this break to our industry. There's already modelers out there that actively use these to great success. But the thing is, when I've used them, I found it extremely hard to be able to get certain pieces in the places I need them. And I also found that the aluminum top tended to accidentally scratch some of my painted pieces, which really affected the end quality of some of my models. So Groovers, we have a few problems and a tool that we want to adapt to our industry. What things can we come up with? Hmm. Let's get down to our workbench and see what we can get. Ah, the workbench. And uh, now we need our idea book. Where did I put that? Ah, there it is. Okay, now we need a clean page. Very nice. I think we will call this project the Bender 1.0 in my beautiful handwriting skills. Now, if we look at the photo etching community and we look at those photo etching breaks, we can see that they're basically composed of three different parts. They have the base, they have a little block on top here, which I refer to this as the cheese wedge. And then we also have a little knob that goes on the top. Now, how these things are designed are very specific to what you're looking for. We're going to do this with 3D metal models in mind. Our cheese wedge, let's go ahead and start with a uh, little rectangle here. It needs to have, I think, at least a few cutouts for cylinders. We'll do a three basic shapes at least. Then we'll do some cutouts here on the right. We're also gonna need to do these in various lengths to accommodate multiple parts. Uh, then I think here on the other side, we can do some more of these. We'll do them a little deeper. And uh, again, do them in various different lengths. Then maybe over here, we can do some smaller cylinders, but I really wanna leave one edge here for some really fine bend work. Hmm. All right, I think our block though, overall, really shouldn't be that big. And I think that we really wanna aim for maybe around 80 millimeters. I think that's a really good length. We don't want something too big. I mean, these models aren't big to begin with. So to shoot for something oversized would be really overkill. And I think the smaller, really the better. We want something that can fit inside of our hands and we can really get in there and manipulate the metal the way we need to. Okay, I think we have a good understanding of where our cheese wedge will look like and what our base will look like, but now I think we need to design that little screw that's gonna go in the middle. I think it's important that if we do our base that we have it a little bit off center. I wanna have one part of the wedge go right over to the side, and then I wanna have a little bit of a space here so that we can use this to have a flat piece uh, kinda of sit firmly on the bottom. Then, uh, this little center though, um, I think I want to have obviously some kind of screw mechanism and the bigger the screw the better that's going to represent my screw It's a very beautiful screw. I know and uh, the handle You know what? We'll start with something flat just like this and see how that works out over time Okay, I think that's a pretty good design for our screw I, I can actually do the uh, top part here so you can understand what I'm talking about the handle will have little kind of little divots like this going all the way around it. 
Um, that's a horrible drawing. See, guys, I, I'm a horrible drawer. So if you understand what I'm saying and uh, get where my mind's coming from, then hey, we're speaking the same language here. Okay, now that we got a general idea of what we're looking for, let's go into Tinkercad and see if we can get everything matched up and see how it comes out. All right, after much tinkering and much cattering, we have the Bender 1.0. I think it looks pretty cool. Just a simple rectangle here for the bottom. We got a nut inside there. This is our lovely cheese wedge. And yes, I've uh, done quite a bit with this guy here. There's no random shapes. Everything here has a purpose. You can see uh, I've done a little bit of work there to get this done. Let's go ahead and uh, just kind of put all that back together there. It might take a few seconds. Same thing with our screw. If everything is done right, it should all line up properly. All right, now that we have our cheese wedge all done up here, let's bring her back over and uh, we're gonna raise it up just a little bit here and uh, we can just hover it right above our plate. And if you take a look inside, you can see it matches up with our nut and we can take our little handle here, flip this guy and then drag it over. And you'll see that that lines up with the nut and everything looks really nice all together. We'll lower it down there. Okay. That is our Bender 1.0. I think it looks pretty good. Let's take us over to Matilda and get our first couple of prototypes printed. All right, and we're back to the workbench. Matilda has done a great job and there's been a lot of tinkering. Let's go over some of our prototypes so we can see exactly how this tool has evolved. The first one that we printed off was just a generic square here on the base and our cheese wedge turned out really nice. One thing I realized when I was using this mechanism is that, well, I needed to have some kind of spring on the inside because, well, sitting it flat here while useful and this material is great for not scratching metal earth models, um, there's no way to get the piece underneath here without unfortunately kind of lifting this up and it's extremely awkward. That just won't do. And one other thing I noticed is that by holding this in my hand, it was actually kind of really big and having a full square or a rectangle in this case kind of uh, dug into my one hand. So I wanted to change that. That brings us to our second prototype. That's this guy right here. Now this prototype worked extremely well. You can see that it uh, has a spring in it. So now our parts can fit right underneath that wedge um, and it can actually uh, do what it needs to do. If you actually watched my stream, you may have seen me using this one here and it's because I wanted to see how well it was going to work in general and see if how these little slots would do. And uh, as you can see, I took away a corner here and that's just for comfort so that when I'm holding this, it actually uh, feels better in my hand. It still feels pretty big though and I use a different texture on the top here which again worked well but um, it was still kind of difficult to get my tweezers underneath that part. Uh, so that brings us to our next bit here which unfortunately broke. So you'll see that this little handle here on the top broke and that's because I decided to make this a little bit bigger but in doing so it made uh, the screw here, the tolerance different, um, which is a silly newbie mistake and I shouldn't have made it, but you know, we make these mistakes when we're trying to figure out these projects. Um, I did decide to uh, move where this was located between this side here. Uh, I decided to move it a little bit more this way and um, that's how I was trying to match up this corner, which it didn't really work out. Anyway, another thing I noticed is that when it came to bending some of our parts, Having a completely square wedge like this actually made it difficult for us to be able to form some of our more rounder, bigger pieces, which is an issue when it comes to building 3D metal models. So this little bit of cheese was going to have to change. That brings us to our fourth prototype here. As you can see, our handle is a lot bigger here. And when you compare it to the other ones, you can definitely see how I've gotten bigger in each one. Um, this just to make it easier for us to be able to operate. This one here did have a spring in it. I took it out. As you can see, there's even a little cutout here for where the spring needs to go. And even this part here has a cutout for the spring uh, allows it to do its job. Um, I also changed how this works as well. It really does go together. And as you can see, it's actually a lot smaller uh, than the other ones. And the reason why I did that was because you didn't need this build volume. It was a complete waste of space. So now that we have this and we understand how this is all going to go together, 
we need to make the actual thing. And that's going to involve one more material and that we'll show you at the end here. All right, Matilda, fire up. We got one more round to go. And there we have it, the Bender 1.0 in all of its glory, complete with spring and soft pushy pad. Yes, Groovers, this tool is awesome, and I've actually already used it in a few other builds, and I have to say, getting those little tiny bends just right has become something of a pleasure of mine. Now, I can't say enough about this tool, but it isn't perfect. It's not gonna replace your tweezers. This is a tweezer aid. It allows you to be able to get those really difficult pieces when you only get that little tiny bit of metal on the edge. And that is where this thing really excels. If you're into making your models look as best as possible, again, this is a must have in your collection. And I really want this to be accessible to as many people as possible. On my wall and in my store, the average model is around like $16.99, $17.99 because the ones I have are a lot of the bigger models out there. I do have ones for $9.99 here too. So I think that this tool at a $14.99 price tag is a really attractive price tag. Other ones compared to this industry is about $90 to $80. Some of them are even up to $300 for this size, which I just don't understand why these are so expensive. Now, another thing I need to do is gauge how much of an interest there really is from our community. So I'm gonna do a two week period of pre-orders on GrooveBuilders.ca. That will allow me to be able to get all the materials together that I need to create the actual products themselves and get them out to you. And because everything's on Shopify, you guys can rest assured that all of your money will be safe and everything is on the up and up. I think with everything that we've covered here on the show, some of the shadier businesses out there in the 3D metal model community, I don't wanna be anywhere near associated with these things. So I wanna do this the best way I possibly can. And I think by doing pre-orders as a small creator myself, this is a really good way to be able to create a bunch of these and get them out to you guys in a quality that I'm very proud of. All right, Groovers, I had a really good time building the Bender 1.0 with you. And if you guys had a good time, don't forget to press that like button. For more videos like this, hit subscribe as well as we got all kinds of really cool content coming out in the future. Want to help a channel grow? Check out GrooveBuilders.ca. Not only can you get Bender 1.0 on there in pre-order, but you can also get some pretty cool models on there at great prices with fast shipping to the United States and Canada. Until next time, Groovers, keep building. I wonder what other tools we can come up with.